God that we can't grasp is that God Almighty, you know, humbled Himself to be among us, and maybe that's the hardest thing that we're going to be able to grasp because as we go to this chapter 2, and as we read this chapter 2, all humanity was waiting for a great king. I don't know if you guys understand that or not, but you always hear people say, well, Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords and, and so on, but in this day and age, they were always waiting for a great king. Okay, there's King Herod. We, we read about King Herod quite a bit, but all these people knew that there was a prophecy that this great king was coming. So all these people were waiting for this great king to come, but it, they were waiting for this great earthly king to come. Now, as you start getting into this chapter 2, they start talking about this great king who's here, and they're referring to Jesus, and many people are happy and overjoyed about it, but many people are not because they want an earthly king, just like Herod, a human king, so they can rule and govern. Well, Jesus Christ did not come to earth for that. Jesus Christ came to show love and understanding and humbleness and forgiveness and so on and so forth. No? So I'll read from this chapter 2, verse 1, and it says, When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, where is the newborn king of the Jews? So immediately, just like I explained to you guys, the, this Magi, you know, the, these, these shepherds were coming and they're looking and they're saying, where is the newborn king of the Jews? So all of a sudden, all, all the people are starting to talk and they say, well, these shepherds, these astrologists, however they're portrayed, are, are coming over here and they're saying, they're looking for the new, newborn king so now everybody is now saying, well, where is this king? He says, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled because he was the king, right? He was the king and all Jerusalem with him. So it wasn't just the king that was troubled, but it was all of Jerusalem that were troubled. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. So right away, King Herod wanted to know himself where, where he was to be born at. No? And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophets. Now when you hear this, for thus it has been written, this is the second time that we read it, remember in chapter 1, verse uh, 22, it says, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. These are all the Old Testament prophecies being revealed in the New Testament, okay? And that's why he says, Thus they said to him in Bethlehem, verse 5, of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall, become, shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly. You know, he calls this guy all on the side, you know, tell me where this newborn king is so I can go over there and do him homage, so I can go over there and show him my respect. Well, on the back side of his brain, he wanted to know where he was because he wanted to kill him, okay? Herod was the king and he didn't want no other kings besides maybe a family member where would the kingship would be passed down, okay? He says, Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience, they said, I mean, with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they, that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house they saw a child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage, Jesus homage. Then they opened their treasure and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and mare. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, 
They departed for their country by another way. So, as Jesus Christ took this form of a slave to dwell among each and every one of us to bring salvation to all humanity, in the worldly journey that everybody is on, this king heard about this newborn king of the Jews was coming, and now the whole story starts changing, okay? In verse 13 it says, when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Herod did not want no other kings on this earth, but Jesus was not about that. And you're going to see as we keep on going through this journey of Matthew, all Jesus Christ came to be is the, sa the Savior of the whole entire world, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you're going to see how He doesn't even want that earthly title. Verse 14, Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod. So what the Lord had said to the prophet, so again, what the Lord had said to the prophet, you know, in the Old Testament, might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been deceived by the Magi, he became furious, and he ordered the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem in its vicinity two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had ascertained from the Magi. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, and she would not be consoled since they were no more. So you understand what just happened there about the massacre of the children? Who understood that part? So what just happened there was Herod knew that there was a newborn king that had just been born, right? So when he asked the Magi, well, where is he? I want to go do him homage. When the angel went to the Magi and said, Depart from this country to another route. Do not go back to Herod and tell him where the child was. Herod got furious and he killed all the children two years and under thinking that he would get Jesus Christ. No? Thinking that he would kill Jesus amongst all those children. And that's what he did. He went and massacred, massacred all those children just trying to destroy Jesus. Just trying to kill Jesus. And that's why, it's called, that's why it says the massacre of the infants. So verse 19. When Herod had died, behold, the angel of the, Lord, of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. He rose, took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that a Achilles was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod. So you can see how the kings, the kingship in those days, it was it would go down to the sons, no? And it would go down this lineage. And that's why Herod wanted to kill Jesus, is because he knew that uh, his son would, would eventually take this kingship over, no? And not this Jesus or this Messiah or this uh, newborn king of the Jews. He was not going to allow it that way. So verse 21, He rose, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Achilles was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go back there. And because he had been warned in a dream, he departed for the region of Galilee. He went and dwelt in a town called Nazareth. So what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled he shall, he shall be called a Nazarene. So, as you go through Matthew chapter 1, this is all the beginning of the New Testament. This is the beginning of Jesus Christ. This is the beginning of the birth. This is the beginning of, of, of all that we know about Christianity. Because before this, before the coming of Jesus, Christianity did not exist in the Old Testament. You know, there, there was the, the Israel, Israelites, the Jewish religion, but not Christianity, okay? 
Christianity comes from Christ. Christianity, not Christians. Not all comes from Jesus Christ. So now, as we're going over this tonight, you guys are reading from the very beginning of where everything starts. Christianity starts here. The birth of Jesus Christ starts here. The birth of the church starts here. Everything starts here in the very beginning of the New Testament. And that's why it's so important for us to go through these scriptures and have a better or more clear understanding so that we know and we understand where it all begins, how it all begins, how Jesus Christ, when later on, you know, you read all these readings in Mass, and a lot of times it might not mean anything to you. And the reason why is because you don't understand them. No? But, it, but if you read in Mass, they have the Old Testament reading, then they'll have a Psalm, then they'll have a New Testament reading, and then they'll have a Gospel reading. And so it all gets put together through the Mass, through the Church, uh, this one section. No? So as, you're, as you attend Mass and as you go to church and you're reading this, if we can get to a more stronger understanding when you're, re when you're hearing the lectors read these uh, readings or the priest or the deacon, you can, you can start relating to it. Just like when the, when, when the priest first walks into Mass and he makes a sign of the cross, uh, he says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. You guys have heard that before, right? Well, that comes from 2 Corinthians 13, 13. And that's why as we continue on reading, you're going to start, right now we're coming into the Christmas season. You're going to start, by the time we get to Christmas, we'll probably be about Matthew 15 or 16. And then they're talking about the birth of Jesus, and they're talking about the Word that become flesh. You're going to have it all right here in the top of your brains because you already you're going down the story in depth. No, if you did go through the story in depth, then you might read something that might click, it might not click. You might understand, you might not understand. But this is how important it is for us to understand that even on this in this Matthew chapter two, that. You always read uh, through the Mass, through Christmas time, about the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, right? You guys remember those? And now, now you can understand what they're talking about. Why is the, uh, you know, at church, they're always talking about ashes. Why are they talking about uh, uh, the incense and all this other stuff? It's going to all start clicking in for you guys. So on this, act, on this Matthew chapter 2, is there any thoughts or any questions that you guys have? Any input? Anything you guys want to add to it? You mentioned, uh, see, in the Old Testament, they were already teaching Christianity, but it wasn't fast. There were some teachers already of Christianity in the Old Testament. But how far it went, I don't know. But some children and scholars believe that, you know? <laughs> the, the, Jewish, the Jewish religion. It is what they what what they did in the Old Testament. Yeah, so they them yes, yes. So 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 the Jewish religion is what they what they practice or what they followed in the old. And remember when the Magi went and he said, "We're looking for the King of what? Jesus. The King of the Jews." No. So everything starts changing now. The chosen people. The other thing that you're going to keep reading, you're going to keep understanding as we go through Matthew 3 and 4, is that the chosen people were the Jews, okay? The chosen people were, 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 were the Jewish people, okay? They were the chosen people. Remember the story of God leading them out of the place of uh, slavery? They were the chosen people. The Gentiles were not the chosen people, and we are the Gentiles, okay? They were not the chosen people. So as you keep on reading... That's why in verse 6 it says, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. So as, as we keep reading this journey of Jesus and the church, the Jews or the Israelites were the chosen people, but they would not accept Him. They would not turn to Jesus. They would not believe in Jesus. So then Jesus Christ told the early church 
opened up the door to the Gentiles. And that's what we are. We are the Gentile people. No? And I just share that with you because when you read, you know, like him becoming the ruler who's a shepherd, my people Israel, there was a chosen race that he wanted to, to really hold on to. No? But when they didn't listen to him, that he opened up the doors to all humanity. No? So, so um, originally, there was a Gentiles that, um, that were not favorable. No? So you guys have to understand that also. So let's go over to uh, beginning of chapter 3. And we're only gonna, we're only going to go over these may, maybe three chapters tonight, just so you have the opportunity to really absorb this story. And, and basically, that's what it is. We're just going over the story, and we're just really absorbing it. Are you going to pick it all up tonight? Probably not. Are you going to pick up some of it? Yes. Are you going to pick up a hundred percent of it? No. But as you keep on reading, you're going to remember. Well, wait a minute. I remember. It. Wait a minute. I. Re you're going to revert back. You're going to come back to all of this, okay? So remember, this is the preaching of John the Baptist. It says, In those days John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight your paths. So let's just stop there for just one minute. Before Jesus Christ came to earth, okay, it was already prophesied that He would send a forerunner ahead of Him. John the Baptizer is the forerunner, okay? And if you go to the last book with me of the Old Testament, which is Malachi, you know, where it's before Matthew. It's the last book of the Old Testament, okay? The last book of the Old Testament is Malachi. And if you go with me to uh, the last chapter, I'll read from verse 19. And it says, For lo, the day is coming blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble. And that day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, there will arise the Son of Justice with his healing rays, and you will gamble, not gamble, gamble, like cast out of the stall, and tread down the wicked. They will become ashes under the soles of your feet. On the day I take action, says the Lord of hosts, remember the law of Moses, my servant? which I enjoined upon him on Herod. I'm going to stop right there real quick. From the very, very beginning, from Genesis, the very first book, the Lord always used somebody to communicate to the people, okay? So if you go back, all the way back, who did the Lord start talking to in the beginning um, to communicate to the people? Noah, remember the, the boat? Noah, Noah's Ark. Then Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Remember all the people? Remember the genealogy of Jesus that we just read about? So ever since the very beginning, God always used someone here on earth to be His spoke person, okay? Always, always, always. So here, what you're reading about is that it says, Lo and behold, the day is coming, guys. The day is coming blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all the other evildoers will become stubble. What, what, don't, don't go back to Matthew, but what did John the baptizer start off by saying? Repent. Repent. And what else? Who said something else? But he said, he starts off with repent, right? Okay, so over here in Malachi saying, for lo, the day is coming... Blazing like the oven, John the baptizer, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? Remember the word that has existed from all eternity? Now he's coming down to earth, no? So in verse 23 he says, Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet 
before the day of the Lord comes. So who's coming before the Lord? Elijah, right? It says, Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with doom. Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the day of the Lord comes. Listen to these words. The great and terrible day. Right? Why the great and terrible day? Because it's a great day for anybody who's waiting for the Lord, right? And it's also a terrible day if the Lord appears in front of you, right? Before the great and terrible day. Now who is coming before the Lord? Who? The, but uh, it says Elijah, right? So Elijah is coming before the Lord. Who are we reading about? So, so where's Elijah? Any thought? Let's go to Matthew 11 real quick. Hold that page, Matthew 3. It's very important, you guys. Very, very important. Matthew, and I believe it's 11. I'm kind of, kind of having to refresh my memory also, so bear with me if I am wrong. So, Matthew 11, verse 13. Thank you. So, I will read from verse 11. Matthew 11, 11. It says, Amen, I say to you, among those born of women there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent are taking it by force. All the prophets and the law prophesied up to the time of John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah, the one who is to come. Whoever has ears ought to hear. So, when you listen to John the Baptizer, Matthew chapter 11 verse 13 tells us, and this is Jesus Christ speaking, that John the Baptizer is in the spirit of who? So who's coming before the day of the Lord? Elijah, right? And we're talking about John the Baptizer, no? Would you guys have ever grabbed that before? That's how important it is to really see what's happening here, no? So this John the Baptizer is the forerunner of the Lord that talk, that is spoken about in Malachi. And in Matthew, and don't, don't try and absorb it all right away, but in Matthew chapter 11, verse 13, Jesus Christ says that John the baptizer is Elijah. Okay? Just a little bit of food, food, you know, for this plate, because when you really start getting into these scriptures, you guys, you guys are going to fall in love. You're going to really be even more hungry than you are now to really go back and refresh. And a lot of us have gone over this. You know, Patricia, Renee, a lot of us, my dad, you know, a lot of, a lot of us inside this room, without going through all the names, we have all gone over the story, but the refreshment of going back over it and understanding it and just reliving it is just an awesome, 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 awesome experience because when you actually can understand it, you can actually see when you do get to Matthew 11, it, it's even more greater because there's a lot of stuff in here because... When you start reading about John the baptizer and he says, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, what is he talking about? What is the kingdom of heaven? Or should I say, who is the kingdom of heaven? Jesus, right? The Word. And that's what John the baptizer says, repent. The kingdom of heaven is what? Is at hand, which means is here, right? The kingdom of heaven is here. Jesus Christ is here. The Savior of the world, the King of kings, the Lord of lords is here. And that's why he goes on to say in verse 2, he says, and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So what you're going to start reading about from this Matthew chapter 3 forward is a lot of repentance, you guys. 
a lot of changing your hearts, your minds, your thoughts, your patterns, your lives, because now we know as we sit inside this room that the Word has become flesh, and now He's here on this earth. John the baptizer is telling all these people, guys, you better repent right now, because the kingdom of heaven is here now. And that's why he says in verse 3, It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Then it starts describing John the baptizer. But before we come to this uh, description and go any further on this one here, let's just stop and take a, a five minute break. Because there's not much more to, to uh, well actually, I'm going to rephrase that. There's a lot more just in that short 10, 15 verses that we have left. But we are going to stop on Matthew chapter 3. So we're going to probably stop a little bit early tonight. But it's really important that if you have your, your markers, your books, that's why I mentioned if you have a Bible that you really intend on holding on to for a long time, whether it's small print, large print, mark it up. Now's your time to mark it up because, you know, and, and you can put, uh, however you do it, it's up to you. You can put your notes in your Bible to refer back to Isaiah 7, Isaiah 9, John 1, however you guys do it. If you have a notebook that you want to slide in your Bible, just so that you remember that you need to go back over here or, or, or this is where it's going to take you back. Just like Matthew 11, how many of you guys even made a note of that Matthew 11, uh, verse 13, about Elijah the prophet? You know? All these notes are very important because you're going to find later on, as we get to the deeper uh, chapters, there's a great big importance to all these scriptures. They're going to lead us back and forth. They're going to lead us forward and backward. They're going to lead us to other different uh, channels. So however you guys put it together, however your mind works, however your thoughts are, you know, please put it back together and put it together however you want. But we'll continue on this as we come back from break.